So first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, North America Per Symposium Committee for giving me this opportunity to present, to stand here and present our research work, which is about monoclonal antibodies against African swan fever virus. So uh, the first documented AS we, uh, ASF outbreak was in Kenya in 1921, and the disease was basically restricted to Africa until 1957. And uh, when it was reported in when it was reported in Lisbon, Portugal, and some Western European countries, and actually some European countries already uh, successfully eradicated some disease the disease by 1990s through the slaughter policy, and then the ASF came across the Atlantic Ocean, came to the Caribbean islands in 1971, like some countries like Dominica and Cuba. The disease outbreak was reported in the Georgia at the beginning of 2007, and then further spread to Armenia, Iran, Russia, and there is concerns that the disease may spread further geographically. So in, 20, in 2018, it came to China, and it further spread, spread to Southeast countries, Asia countries like Philippines, Vietnam, and also Korea, both North and South. So basically, these new outbreaks in Asia pose a potential pandemic threat to the global swine industry. So as we all know, African swan, the causative agent, African swine fever virus, is the uh, only member in s family, and our s virus genus is an enveloped virus with symmetry, uh, with uh, asphyxial symmetry. The virus contains a linear double-stranded DNA genome of 170 to 190 kilobits pairs, encoding of more than 150 open reading frames. So, as you can see, the, the genome-containing nuclear was wrapped by a, a thick protein co-shield and in the membrane, the, the caps the protein and then the uh, outer membrane. So, uh, due to the complexity of the virus, the exact host immune mechanism and uh, the range of critical viral immune determinants has has yet to be defined for developing effective vaccines. So the only way to control ASF is to through uh, quarantine and elimination of the infected pigs. So therefore, highly sensitive and specific diagnostic regions and assays are needed for both for rapid detection of the virus and isolating the infected animals. As we all know, monoclonal antibodies can serve as key regions for detection of viral infection and study the viral protein structure function, development of any viral intervention strategies. So with the support from National Pork Board, we are currently developing a panel of monoclonal antibodies against African swine fever virus. And you can see uh, these, these proteins are selected because based on their key functions in the viral replication and immunogen immunogenic nature. So they, are, they were reported or predicted to be on the surface of the virus. And also, there was reported that these proteins can, is keep, are capable to induce antibody response in immunized pigs. So currently, we have generated antibodies against uh, six of these proteins, like CD2V, P3, D4, P10, P49, P22, and P30. And then multiple clones of antibody were obtained for each protein. So we further characterized these antibodies in various assays uh, in vitro, so like IFA, IP, and resin blob. As you can see, the IFA was done in the transfected mark cells is processing ASV antigens, and uh, antibodies can spec specifically recognize the DNA binding protein, P10 here, which is mainly localized in the cell nucleus. And other antibodies can recognize uh, its corresponding proteins in transfected cells. And for the antibodies against the P30, we selected uh, clone 47-3, 62-35, 142-4 for characterization. Since we have the recombinant alpha virus expressing P30, so this alpha it was done using the alpha virus infected cells. So further, we categorized using the Western blood and immunoprecipitation. As you can see, specific band for P10, P49, P22, P54, and CD2V can be detected. And also, these antibodies can detect its corresponding proteins in the immunoprecipitated proteins. So again, for the antibody against the P30, same thing, like 
the, uh, the Western blot and IP was performed using the IFR virus infected cells. And you can see these antibodies can specifically rec recognize the P30 protein. So we further tested these antibodies in a virus in BSL3 lab. So basically the virus cells were infected with the BA71V strain virus and then uh, fixed stain for these antibodies for RFA analysis. You can see the ASF ASFV infected cells are strongly labeled and you can see that these antibodies can recognize uh, can, can recognize B71V string uh, infected cells. So again, same thing for the antibodies against the P30. The RFA was done using the uh, on PAM cells infected by Georgia 07 string and also on viral cells infected by the B71 string. So you can see these three antibodies can recognize the specifically the ASV infected cells. And, and this indicates that this can recognize both, can detect both strains. So we further tested the P30 antibody in the paraffin embedded tissues from pigs infected with the Georgia 07 virus. And antibody number 47.3 were, were used for staining the tissue. You can see the tissue like lung spleen, tonsil lymph node are uh, staining positive for ASV antigens and the milk infected are negative. So we further did the F2 mapping for P30 antibody. Uh, basically, the P30 fragment were expressing in the E. coli, and you can see these three clones can recognize the full-length P30, and for clone 47-3, it recognized the F2 located between uh, 61 to 100 amino acid. And we further confirmed the data using EGLP fused P30, and uh, that first narrows down the F2 to 63 to 61 to 93 amino Interested in this epitope were also recognized by a serum antibody from infected pigs. So basically, this study was perform performed by Dr. Rowland's research group, and they used, uh, they used a vaccination strategy incorporating priming with the uh, recombinant IFR virus expressing P30, then both with the attenuated live virus. And the serum were used for epitope mapping. And uh, you can see that nine of the 10 pigs from the boost group, the, the prime boost group, uh, recognized the aptitude between 61 to 110 region and are compared to one of 10 three over six pigs in the other two groups. So basically the major effect of the prime boost was to enhance recognition of this region, 61 to, to uh, 110. So this region may contain an aptitude with important immunological function. And our antibodies recognizing this region can be used to study the underlying immunological mechanisms. So for the other two antibodies, for the other two antibodies, 62-35-142-34, they both recognize a large c terminal fragment, 11224 region. And we further use the GLP targeted P30 to test the possibility that they may recognize the confirmation epitope. And our three results shows that they recognize a relatively large state terminal, 120 to 204 region. So we further analyzed the P30 sequence using software to predict the intrinsic disorder region. As you can see, the amino acid 91 to 143 region is, uh, is predicted to be disordered and, uh, and, and, and are flexible with the secondary structure. This region, this region were enriched with the glutamic uh, residues, serines, and other polo or charged residues with characteristic of the loops and disorder region. And also, uh, this region contains only three alphabetic residues, indicating that it may be labile and are highly surface exposed. So, a, uh, the, a property potentially related to the intrinsic disorder is the highly immunogenic region, is the highly immun immunogenic nature of the C terminal P30. So, the uh, Epitope mapping, mapping using PIX serum reveals that the C terminal of the P30 is highly immunodominant. And our, our antibodies recognizing this region can be utilized to study the, the rule of disorder region involved in the immunological function of P30. So next, to, to, to determine whether those epitope regions are conserved among other genotypes or not, 
we analyzed a total of 19 genotypes. So as you can see, uh, a total of five amino acid change was identi uh, were identified in the antibody 4733 recognition region, and uh, a single amino acid change from histidine to arginine in position 67 between uh, stream B711 to the Georgia did not impair the antibody binding. So it's lucky that the same thing, like other strains that have the arginine mutation in the position 61 can also be recognized by the antibody. So on the other hand, for the other two, the other two clones, they recognize the large C-terminal region, and uh, this, region, uh, this region, the mutation from E to V mutation uh, between the genotype 1 to genotype 2 did not impair the binding of these two antibodies. And uh, for other genotypes, genotype 3, 4, 7, and uh, uh, 17, 18, and 19 also have the mutation, may not be recognized, uh, may, may also be recognized by these two. But we don't know that other amino acid change in other regions will affect the binding or not. This needs to be further determined. So with that, uh, in summary, monoclonal antibodies against ASV P10, P22, P30, CD2E, P49, and P54 has been, have been generated in this study. And uh, the antibodies against P30 detected viral antigens in virus infected cells and tissues. The ap mapping results reveals unique properties of P30, and uh, our produced antibody can be used as valuable tools for ASV detection and surveillance. And also, there are important regions for basic mechanism studies toward developing vaccines and uh, any viral agents against the viral infection. So with that, I'd like to thank my media professor, Dr. Infon, for her instruction, and thank everybody in Dr. Fon's lab. We moved from K-State to University of Illinois, and this work was partially done in K-State. Thank Dr. Baba Roland, research group in Kansas City University. I thank our funding agency, National Public Board, and also thank the Pearl Symposium for providing the uh, travel fellowships. Thank you for your attention. Nice talk. Um, I think we have some time for questions. Uh, did you look at the neutralizing properties of these antibodies? Functionally, what do they do? Uh, we, 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 have, we have not looked at the, these neutralizing functions of these antibodies, but we will look at them in the future. That's, that's our next step, yeah, for sure. Have you looked to see if it works in uh, flow cytometry? The antibodies in flow cytometry? Right. Uh, no, yeah, but we will so do that. Yeah, 